Okay. Um, good afternoon once again. So today we have a special lesson. Uh, the special lesson uh, for today is uh, on fire. Okay. We are still talking about uh, safety, health and safety on site. Uh, and we understand that um, health and safety is very, very important when especially uh, dealing with things that can also cause uh, fire. This is the reason why fire is very, very important to, to mention or maybe to discuss about. So number one, we need first to, to define what is fire. How can you define fire? Uh, some people, they define fire in a dif different way. I don't know to your side, how can you define fire? What is fire? What is fire? Fire is, uh, is fuel that produces heat effect or heat energy. Okay. Yeah, so if you say fire is a fuel, it means that there is something that you, you need also to combine to add. So in short, you are saying, the proper definition is saying, fire or burning is a rapid combination. Fire burning is a rapid what? Combination of a fuel with oxygen at a high temperature. So there are two things. Fuel, oxygen, okay, at the high white temperature. So the rapid. So the two things, if the two things are meeting, so fuel and also the source of fire plus oxygen, the three things now form what? Fire. Okay? Now for you to understand fire can reach a temperature of up to uh, maybe you say one thousand degrees Celsius. When the temperature reach at 1,000 degrees Celsius, fire can be can occur. Okay, fire can occur. Uh, we have heard or we have seen some places in other countries where because of heat temperature, the fire can go at, can start. Yeah. So we are saying, for you to understand very well how to explain fire, we are saying fire is a combination of three. When the three combine plus a temperature, what will happen? It will cause fire. What are the three? Number one, fuel. Number two, heat. Number three, oxygen. So in short, you are making a triangle. Okay, you can still draw like a triangle. Then the triangle has got how many corners? Three corners. The other side is the fuel. The other side is the oxygen. The other side is the what? Is the heat. So now, without uh, one of the three, then there will be no fire. No fire. If you remove heat, there will be no fire. If you remove fuel, there is no fire. If they, you remove oxygen, there shall be no what? No fire. So the three combination can make what? A fire. At a high tempr temperature. If the temperature reach at up to 1000 degrees Celsius, then we're expecting fire to occur. Okay? Now, um, we need also to understand the three aspects. We need to understand the three aspects of fuel, gas, I mean fuel or gas, we can say uh, oxygen, and also heat. Now, the fuel is a combustible substance. A fuel is a what? combustible substance now if the combustible substance is present what are these combustible substances fuel we may talk about even firewood even paper any fabric anything is a what is a combustible substance anything that can catch fire if it is a paper if it is a hood if it is a, a, a fuel or whatever whatever method or whatever thing we are going to use Okay, it is a what? A combustible. That is fuel. Fuel. You get the point, eh? So if you say wood or charcoal, charcoal is a combustible substance, substance or product that can cause fire when there is a presence of fuel and the oxygen. 
okay number two uh oxygen we normally use uh, oxygen as air isn't it yes oxygen is what is air so now minus this air okay that can also support the burning then a fire cannot occur this is the reason why i can give example you you you, you light a candle okay then we normally use our hands to protect the candle that flame not to stop or not to go why are you protecting you are protecting not a flame we are protecting oxygen oxygen so if you are just moving the candle where there is the air too much air remember this air we are we have we are, we are actually experiencing it's the air that is combined with other uh, other gases there's oxygen as well there's carbon dioxide and there's also other gases now you find that sometimes air or sometimes oxygen may be defeated defeated by this carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide is the mixture of other gases that cannot be actually good uh, to health isn't it yes. carbon dioxide therefore if you are, you are you are moving with fire the candle which is actually burning and the, the air is passing what will happen it will go off so now what you do what makes that fire to go off or that flame to go off it's because of the combination of air that is which is carbon dioxide or other gases other gases in the atmosphere therefore when you you you, you, you like a candle you need actually sometimes to protect you do like this you are protecting not your frame but to protect the oxygen the oxygen because the oxygen is supporting his life is supporting the belly the belly okay that's why oxygen usually air is very very important number three the source of heat what are the sources of heat? The source of heat might be a spark, might be a friction, a friction. It can be also a match, a matches. Okay, those are sources of what? Heat. So where there is a friction, serious friction, you may even it may even cause fire. Remember, uh, long time ago people were saying, okay, how how do you make fire where there is no match or matches? Okay. Old timers or maybe old people they were using soft hood. Okay, the dry soft what? Soft hood. So what they, they were normally do is to make sure that they start now squeezing or making a friction with the hard hood to make that uh, friction and also create heat. After creating heat, what will happen? There will be a fire. So fire will be produced from, from the hood. Okay. So a source of heat, a spark, a friction, or a matches can cause what? Can cause fire. So the three in the triangle form will form what? Form fire. So maybe the question may come to say, ex uh, um, explain or maybe identify three principles that can cause fire. Or three principles that make fire. Okay, because the fire we're talking about the uh, ignition where there's a mixture, a combination. A combination of the three uh, principles which is fuel heat and what yes now when you look at this triangle uh, can it be actually spread quickly or quite rapid and once established even a small fire can generate sufficient heat energy to, to spread a uh, maybe we say to spread and accelerate the fire surrounding uh, the combustible material. That's the reason why some many of the time, if someone may be smoking, then you throw that piece of what uh, cigarette, where maybe there is a combustible substance or material, it may cause what? It may cause fire. So it's important that uh, even the the, the 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 community, the people in the community, or maybe in the workshop where they are. Where we are. That's why last time we said uh, do not smoke. Do not smoke, for example, in the workshop. For example, a workshop, there are a lot of uh, combustible substances, flammable material that can cause what? Fire. So meaning that there's no need of producing the source of what? Heat. Okay? Therefore, 
Fire prevention is largely actually good housekeeping and common sense. So there's need of housekeeping. Now what is housekeeping? Housekeeping is when you arrange, you put everything right in order to clean the surrounding area, to clean the, the working place, for example, the workshop. The workshop must be clean, must be clean. Why cleaning? Because in that workshop, there's a lot of substances that can cause what? Fire, if the heat is in presence, in, the, in, 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 in place. Okay, that's why they will say, after maybe working, you need to do what? To clean. So housekeeping is not about keeping the families on how to keep the family in, in, in good way. Uh, or in good way. No, we're talking about in cleaning the working place, the working place after finishing your work, your work. Not only cleaning, but also make sure that the, the, the machines or maybe the, the tools you are using are also put in what? In order. Many of the time when we're talking about housekeeping, we fail to understand because after maybe using a certain a certain a certain tool, some people they don't even care. They just throw it or maybe put somewhere without cleaning or putting the, the tool in what the in the in the on the place where it's supposed to be to be put. Okay? So um fire we need also to understand that uh, there's need of a common sense. There's need of what? Common sense. What is this common sense? Common sense is someone need to be alert. Someone need to understand that, okay? At this place, there are so many things that can cause fire. What do you do? Let's make sure that um, everything, they are what? They are in, in place. They are clean. The fire is not near the combustible materials, okay? Then there's no oil, there's no gas, there's no fuel, there's no what. Do you know that even paint, for example, this building, in this room, it is painted two colors or two types of paints. We have water paint, okay, and down here you see the gray, I mean, is it a gray one? The, the, the cream white, it is coated the cream white, but this paint is not, um, it's not water paint. This is acrylic paint, which we call oil paint. Now this acrylic paint, it is a, is a, is a, is a combustible, is flammable material. Okay, that's why sometimes if you see, maybe the, the fire catch the, the, the house, the house which is painted with this paint, acrylic or maybe oil paint, there will be a serious fire. Plus, these other materials, wood. Look at the iron sheets. The iron sheets sometimes coated the other paints. So all these can cause what? Can cause a serious what? A serious fire. Okay. So that's why there's need of identifying uh, ways and means of quenching or stopping what? Stopping fire. That's the reason why there's an introduction of the fire extinguishers. Now, these fire extinguishers are portable. Fire extinguishers are domestic, domestic for domestic purpose. Okay. So, there's fire extinguishers in our houses. Fire extinguishers can be used in our kitchen. Fire extinguishers can be used in our vehicles. Okay. Fire, fire extinguishers can be used in our working places. But when you talk about industrial issue, okay, on the other industrial area or industrial um a plant maybe a plant where there are a lot of manufacturing things there are a lot of activities there there's no need of using what fire fire extinguisher yes we can have fire extinguisher just for small image emergence of fire but we need to provide uh fire hydrants okay we need to provide fire hydrants now when look at the, you double check some cities in our in our country for example Osaka, our capital city you find that if you are going passing through the, the street you never fire you never you never find fire hydrant <laughs> you never fi find what fire hydrant this is the one thing that we, we we even the government 
even these people are saying they look after uh, uh, what uh, safety and whatever. They forget one thing. In fact, it is the responsibility of the city council, okay, the local government, to ensure that uh, the whole streets they are what fire hydrants. Now, this fire hydrant it is uh, a provision which will help to stop fire in case of fire in these uh, buildings. Instead of using, um, uh, what do we call these people? Um, fire brigade to come and quench fire, to stop fire. And this fire brigade, maybe, they have only maybe two vehicles. Huh? Two vehicles, two tankers to, to support, to, 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 to supply water. I mean, to supply water. How are we going to manage? No. Therefore, it is important to you know that the whole street must be what? Must have fire hydrant. Let me give an example of Cairo Road. If you look at Cairo Road, there are a lot of buildings and there are a lot of business, businesses. Another road, we may talk about uh, Independence Avenue. We may talk about uh, uh, what, road, what other road which is busy. Um, what road is this after 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 Cairo? Chacha Road. Road. The other road. Freedom Way. The other road. Um, Lumumba road. road. So these roads are busy roads. There are a lot of activities. So it is vital that this road must have what? Fire hydrant. Look at the big city. I mean the big market, which is the city market. Soweto. Okay. Look at this place. Uh, bus stop. We have bus stop like in Intercity. We have bus stop like uh, uh, Millennium. Bus stop like uh, um, Kolima Tower. All these places must have what? Adequate with the high pressure of water with fire hydrants. Okay, in case of fire, they should not wait for tender vehicles to bring water. To bring water. Okay. These tender vehicles, or maybe we say these tankers, they are just there uh, for maybe emergencies in the community, in the community, but not necessarily in the in the street. So each point where there are a lot of buildings, they are supposed to have what a fire hydrant. I'm getting surprised because we are we are when I was trying to pass through these uh, shopping malls in Osaka, you go to. Um, Left Junction, you go to East Park Mall, and these new uh, uh, shopping mall centers, you find that they are what? Fire hydrant. Why these people putting fire hydrant? It's because we don't have many businessmen and women who are doing this business from Zambia. Many of these people, even contractors who are building these structures or infrastructure, they are from where? Outside the country country from South Africa. Why? Because it is a must. It is written. It is a law that where there is a lot of people, where there are for activities, there is, must be a what? A fire hydrant. Plus fire extinguishers in their offices. But look at our, our building in Cairo Road. You never find fire hydrants. Fire hydrant, maybe there is no what? No water. Okay? Just try to walk, maybe to walk, to walk along the road to check for this fire. We will never find them. If you find the fire hydrant, they are broken. They are vandalized. What if now the fire come to a certain building? Maybe there's a bank. Is there this building where there's a lot of activities? There are a lot of businesses. So fire hydrants are very, very important. Now, in the other places, in other countries, let let's talk about UK. Talk about German. Talk about maybe even China and America. You find that fire hydrant, these are cardinal proper properties of the local government to protect the community against what? A, a breakout of what? Fire. Okay? So even to help the, the local government for flushing, what I mean flushing, cleaning the cities. During night, after all the businesses have done, People have knocked off, they are gone, they are, they are 
various homes, it is now the responsibility of the council workers to start now flushing, cleaning the roads, using what? The fire hydrant points. These buildings, we have seen nice buildings. This building have to be cleaned nicely. Tomorrow morning when you are going the street, you never find anything, just find nice roads. The roads are clean, flushed and washed by what? By fire, by, 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 by water. So this is the responsibility of who? the local government. Okay? Now you find that tomorrow morning you go in the street, you find a lot of garbages. There are a lot of floods. The road is still dead. A lot of dust in the corridor, the dust. Things are not in order. It's, you get the point, eh? Yes. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that fire hydrants are very what? Very, very important. In case of fire, uh, let, me, let me say this to those who are watching. Um, it, it is another, another issue of, especially when it comes to fire, safety and fire. Uh, fire and safety, these two are important. Yeah, le let me mention this, especially in our area, uh, plumbers in plumbing area, because plumber, plumbers deals with water, isn't it? And uh, these are contractors who actually um, install and is, uh, uh, is, uh, install water supply networks, uh, sanitary appliances, and the other things. Now, my surprise is that there are so many buildings, okay? There are so many modern buildings currently, which are now built nicely, beautiful, but they think that this, far, this, this building, they don't have uh, fire sprinklers. Okay, there are no what? fire sprinklers. In banks, there are no fire sprinklers. Even maybe in some hospital, there are no fire sprinklers. Okay, public buildings must have what? Fire sprinklers. What is the function of this fire sprinkler? In the case of emergency fire, okay? Since these fire sprinklers are automatic, automation system, where it actually detect the heat temperature temperature when the temperature reaches a certain point or degree then the sprinklers will do what will break and start producing water to stop fire in that building in all offices whether it's the government or private office office it's supposed to have what fire spray sprinklers but we have uh, people here we have engineers in the infrastructure, okay, who knows how to design, but they forget one thing. I appreciate these people from, from uh, India, from South Africa, from America, who are building their buildings, who are, who are building their, who are having their infrastructure here in Zambia. They don't forget this important part of fire sprinklers in their buildings. Okay. I don't know if it is because uh, maybe our syllabus, especially for plumbers, where they, they learn plumbing, maybe in their syllabus they had no fire sprinklers. But whom do you think can do the best? It is the responsibility of even the training institution to train about fire sprinklers. That should be also considered in the uh, infrastructure development. Okay. Now, Let's come to our, our, our point today. Our point we are saying fire is, uh, is, uh, is important because it helps actually uh, in terms of health and whatever. But we need to, to make sure that when you are using fire, we need to follow what is just requir required to be followed. Okay. Now, let me talk about um, uh, causes of fire. Let me talk about... Uh, Cause of fire. Number one, if you are working close to a combustible material, for example, timber, okay, always make sure that you protect the area around, okay, the fitting, you are soldering, for example, you are soldering, you are welding, okay, you are cooking, you are doing anything which can be used by fire, or you are using fire. 
make sure that the area is kept well, protected, protected. Because, for example, kitchen, you are cooking in the, in the kitchen, you are using um, stove, isn't it? Then remember, you are maybe flying something using cooking oil. Cooking oil is a flammable substance. Can you cause what? Fire. Okay? Then, materials. We need to understand the materials. That can easily cause what? I mean, can easily catch fire. Okay? There are things that can be easily catch fire. So if you understand, you know, you check, you double check nicely. You need to, to, to make sure that all these need to be put away from what? From, from, from the fire, from, from that, uh, the material that can cause even fire. Okay? Um, make sure that, uh, especially when you are talking about safety, uh, kitchen, you need to prepare or to, to, yeah, to, to prepare maybe a blanket. Okay? You wait, you put in water blanket then you need to remove water there at least it's wet after that you just keep in case of what fire on the stove use that one to stop fire that will help as a uh, as a as a basic okay basic um, uh, fire extinguisher to stop that fire okay then uh, we need to make sure that um, uh, fire can be caused due to electrical fault, isn't it? Due to what? Electrical fault. Or alteration and repairs in electrical installation and whatever, maybe it's a radio, maybe it's a stove, maybe whatever machine you are using, but it is using electricity. Make sure that everything they what? They're in order. Never use unqualified personnel to repair a stove, to repair a fridge, to repair whatever, Maybe that person may leave a negative wire somewhere, negative cable somewhere. What will happen? Fire will light up. Exactly. Okay. So we need to use a qualified personnel. Also, in construction sites, what is this construction site? Where there are a lot of activities. They are building upstairs. They are building a lot of infrastructure, structures. There are a lot of things there. They are, uh, they are, their cables, their timbers, wood, their flammable pens, and a lot of things there. Meaning that all these things need to be what? To be put in order. Okay? Make sure that the area where you are using the blowtorch is clean before you even start. start. This is now come to the responsibility of the safety manager. The safety manager, if it is on site, or maybe construction site, is the last, is the last person to knock off. <laughs> okay? The last person to do what? To knock off. Everyone will go, then him will remain. Why remain? Everything then in order. You need to go around and see if things are what? In order. To check nicely. Checking, checking, checking. After checking, tomorrow, if you find there's a and a hazard somewhere. Tomorrow morning, the first thing is to do what? Is to call the people responsible to go and work on what? On that force, or maybe on that, on that issues. So that's about fire. So on occasion, you may be working in the occupied buildings, such as offices, blocks, whatever markets, where there are a lot of people, Okay, you must be aware of their safety procedures. Hmm? Safety what? Procedures. I remember city market one time here in Zambia, Lusaka. Okay, you, you, have, you have heard these accidents. Copper Belt, Stockholm Market, all these markets. Can you imagine why? There are a lot of people there and with different minds and different backgrounds. And to make the matters worse, the markets, there are no fire hydrants. Fire hydrants. Okay? Maybe there are fire hydrants, fire, will fire hydrants, they have vandalized them. They store even my, 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 chain, my, 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 my horse, my horse pipe. Okay? My valves, they vandalized. So, when the fire comes, no one can stop it. So, we lose a lot of properties. 
That's the thing about it, fire. So you must also know where your, your assembly point is located. Okay? It is the responsibility of the safety manager to call or maybe siren to say there is fire somewhere. Then people have to run to go and assemble. Or maybe if it's not about fire, okay, people should assemble somewhere so that uh, they uh, can be addressed by something maybe that can be sensed. So this is part, uh, another part one for fire. So now next part, we'll talk about classes of fire. We'll talk about classes of fire. Don't forget we are discussing on the fire. Fire and also the importance of fire hydrants. Then when you come back, we'll talk about uh, fire extinguishers and the classes of fire or types of fire. So I'm emphasizing that uh, when you are, you are building or maybe you are in a uh, certain building or maybe the shop, wherever you are, make sure that you the, structure, the structure of the building is supposed to have fire hydrant or maybe fire extinguisher or maybe there's need of a fire uh, sprinklers because this will help us to stop fire in our society. So thank you very much for this uh, lesson for today. Again, we shall look at um, uh, classes of fire and also type of fire extinguishers. Thank you very much.